7 o'clock. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the meeting of the Granville City Council. I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask Marcy to call the roll, please. Councilmember Gelderlos? Here. Maringa? Here. Nordha? Here. Steenstra? Here. Troost? Here. Vanderwall? Here. And Mayor Moss? Here. Well, I see that the pastor we had scheduled to uh, give the invocation tonight is not here, so I will be giving the invocation. So for anybody who wishes to join me, I'm going to stand and we're going to follow that with a Pledge of Allegiance. We pray, God, thank you for such a beautiful day. Thank you you've created a beautiful world for us to enjoy, and thank you that we live in a community like Granville. Thank you for all the men and women who work hard to serve the citizens here. We pray tonight that you will give us wisdom in every decision that we make, and that it will all be done in the best interest of the people who live here. We thank you that you love us, that you take care of us, and you see things from beginning to end, and so we ask for your wisdom in, in our decisions tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have before you the agenda for tonight's meeting. Is there a motion to, I'm sorry, an amended agenda, which uh, includes uh, a new item, which is closed session, uh, to talk about commercial tax appeal. So is there a motion to approve the amended agenda? So moved. Motion support. And support. Any discussion? Uh, if not, all in favor of approving the agenda, please say yes. 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 Any opposition, please say no. Okay, uh, next item, we've got the minutes from our last meeting, which was March 28th. We had a chance to take a look at those. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Motion. Support. And support. Any questions, comments? If not, all those in favor of approving those minutes, please say yes. Yes. If you have any opposition, please say no. Okay, and we are down to presentation of the bills in a smaller amount than we usually see. So, yeah. Ken, anything um, you'd like to talk to us about before we open it up for questions? I on had those to bills? dig a little to find anything yeah. to highlight. It's pretty boring, actually. No, but that's, that's good, good, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to highlight on page two the invoice for overhead door. Um, that was a project to replace a garage door in the uh, police garage, and that was a uh, project that was approved by council last September. That's now done, and this is the invoice for the completed work. And then on page four, uh, you probably noticed the Granville Public Schools $18,000 invoice, and that's the um, second time we've done this now. This is reflecting the new agreement about summer recreation that we talked about <coughs> last year prior to um, that, that particular season of summer recreation. The new summer season is coming up, and this is the... Um, amount that's agreed to um, by that document that we approved last year and we'll um, transmitting that to the uh, to the schools and they'll be taking the lead on summer rec again so uh, there may be other questions but uh, I just didn't have any longer than that to add to the list okay. questions for Ken on any of the bills tonight okay if not is there a motion to approve the bills tonight in the amount of two hundred and twenty four thousand six hundred and fifty nine dollars and forty four cents so moved. Motion. Support. And support. Any other comments, questions? Marcy, would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Maringa? Yes. Nordhuk? Yes. Steenstra? Yes. Troost? Yes. Vanderwall? Yes. Gilderlos? Yes. And Mayor Moss? Yes. My favorite part of the meeting, public comment. Anybody here tonight like to address the council? Just come on up to the podium, give us your name, address, and tell us what you're thinking about. Kyla, welcome. I just wanted to um, really thank everybody to have such an excellent staff of paramedics and, and fire department people that came. Last Thursday night, I came home about 11, 11, 15, and a police officer backed up in front of my house. And as I noticed him, I looked across the street, and my neighbor's lights were all on. The paramedics were there, and she's an older lady, like in her mid-80s, and had some issues. And so ran over and it was just nice to see familiar faces that were very skilled and handled the situation very well. Tom, um, and I don't know if I say his last name right, Dekema? Dekema. 
Okay. He was there, and when I walked through the door, he's like, oh, it's the tree lady. <laughs> so, um, but it was, it was really nice to have a familiar face, you know, when you're in a kind of a scary situation, and they handled it very well. She went off in an ambulance, and I followed her up, and we actually got to bring her home at about 4.30 in the morning, and nobody really knew what happened. <laughs> so... It was just nice that there's a lot of communication. She was on the phone with her son in Georgia, and he noticed her slurred speech, and we thought maybe a stroke or something, but luckily nothing happened, so that was really good. But um, I just want to, you really realize when you're in a situation like that how, how fortunate we are here in Greenville. People respond really quick. That communication came from Georgia, and within about 10 minutes they were there. So it was really nice. Um, Two, um, I want to remind everybody that Arbor Day is the 29th of April. We're going to plant the mayor's tree as we do every year for Arbor Day. We will be planting a street tree just west of the library on Maple Street. And we have a little ceremony that goes with it, and we'll, we'll be planting a, a linden tree there. And then the Granville Community Tree Project, the tree board will put the Arbor Day celebration on, and then the Granville Community Tree Project is actually going to be on location at the library with kind of a surprise for everyone. And we'll have our bark to hand out fresh off our trees and, and some succulents and some other things that will be nice surprises. So I just want to encourage everybody that's at the Art and Chocolate Walk to come find us. And if you came a half hour early, you could come be part of our Arbor Day celebration. There, there's details on our website. And the student that designed the Arbor Day t-shirt, we had a little design snafu but it's up and it's on our um, apparel site now so you can order it and we have till Thursday to get our orders in if we want to wear it <laughs> for Arbor Day so that's all I have for tonight thank you thank you Kyla thanks for being a good neighbor too for your for your neighbor and that's that's good to hear I mean a lot of times when we look at the reports on how many police calls or EMS calls there's a lot of them so and uh, it's good to hear that it's appreciated because it is. Anybody else like to address the council? Just come on up. Carolyn, anything tonight? Yeah. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. If not, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. We have the March reports for the Department of Public Works, the police, and the treasurer. And we have the minutes from the Environmental Sustainability Committee and the library board. And we also have a resolution setting a public hearing for the fiscal year 2022 to 2023 uh, budget, we've set that for May 9. Uh, the resolution would set it for May 9 at 7 p.m. So is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Support. Motion to support. Any comments, questions? All right. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say yes. 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 Any opposition, please say no. <clears throat> Great. Ken, we're down to the city manager's report. Uh, I, I'll uh, introduce this, and then Charlie, if there's any questions, he can uh, step in. But we uh, annually bid a budget for and then take bids on overlays to a variety of streets uh, in Granville, both major and local. <clears throat> what you have before you tonight is the results of the bids that were taken last Monday for the local streets in the city. Um, and we had budgeted for um, resurfacing seven of those local streets uh, along with the Public Works parking lot. Uh, the streets that are involved are White, Vermont, 41st, Lucas, Red Wing, Red Wing Court, and Church. Um, the uh, summary of the bids is there. There were three that were received. Uh, the low bidder was Michigan Paving and Materials in the amount of $341,753.44. So a third of a million dollars being invested uh, by the city in our local streets uh, if this bid is awarded tonight. And we expect that work most likely, I think, to be done in June. Do you have any more specific than that or not at this point? No, we're going to approval. meeting with the contractor. And Get a schedule. Then. Okay. So um, you've got the uh, summary of the total as well as the individual by street. <clears throat> and those are estimated amounts uh, based on the tonnage that they're figuring here. But um, the uh, appropriate council action, if you wish to proceed, would be to award the bid to the low bidder, um, Michigan, Michigan Paving and Materials. Okay. 
I've got a question for you, just out of curiosity. Um, I know I'm always excited when a street in my neighborhood gets paved and it's like nothing like fresh asphalt, right? I mean, it, really, it's a beautiful yeah. sight. Mm -hmm. So is this, I mean, this is going to happen. I mean, is this something that, Josh, I know you're kind of in charge of the city website, that, or um, the city Facebook, one of the city Facebook pages, that Josh or somebody could put on and just, yeah. hey, this is what's coming up this year and this is what's happening. And, and, and we ask our departments also to provide information on the website as well. Okay. And so um, we usually hit big projects for the year and that kind of thing. So I'm sure and Charlie's... On the website, we have all the, all the okay. main projects and all the street projects. Okay. That are going on. But that's something the Facebook page yeah. should throw. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I posted that last year from the list okay. of the website, okay. too, just because this time of year people start asking, yeah. you know, right. what streets are getting paved and... They let us know where the potholes are and you know, those kinds yeah. of things. Streets never look worse than they do at the end of the winter. Yeah. And that's no exception <laughs> right now. They never look better than when they're freshly paved. <laughs> <laughs> I drove uh, these today, and you know we, we do uh, rely on our public works department to prioritize for us, and it is based on a pavement rating uh, that yeah. we uh, participate in. So there's logic to it. Um, there's many more streets that need to be done. <laughs> we wish we had uh, enough resources to keep on going, but at this point, this is what we have uh, to fits within the budget for this current fiscal year. Oh, well, it's nice to see that it was under budget, too. Under yeah, just, that, just under, a little bit, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. $57,000 yeah. or so. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Anything else, Charlie? Or? No. Okay. Is there a motion to award the uh, paving bid to Michigan Paving and Materials in the amount of 341000 $753.44. So moved. Motion? Support. And support. All right. Any other comments or questions? Marcy, would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Norcutt? Yes. Steenstra? Yes. Truce? Yes. Vanderwall? Yes. Gelderlos? Yes. Maringa? Yes. And Mayor Moss? Yes. And a bunch of administrative policies. Yeah, we, we're um, looking at trying to kind of run through the entire roster of policies we have in the city um, and update them. Um, it's probably something that you should expect to see on a fairly regular basis, maybe not every council meeting, but uh, every two or three anyway as we kind of go through that. Um, the initial batch was triggered by the announcement that our judge was retiring from the bench at the end of the year and that there would be an open election to fill that seat at the 59th District Court. And um, our uh, HR assistant, uh, Jana Oshoff, had uh, registered that there really is no policy that uh, speaks to uh, how the, the compensation for the judge works. And it's different, uh, you might recall, from previous budgets in that uh, the state of Michigan that gets involved in um, paying for a portion of salary and benefits. So. Uh, because there's likely to be a, a contested election and new candidates that will be coming in, I um, thought it would be a good idea to um, put all that that we know uh, internally very well but is not necessarily published into a written policy. Uh, and that, at least in the portion that I have, I think it's the last policy that was included. I'm not sure what order everyone's wound up in, but it's the one that's clearly labeled new policy, elected judge at the top. So uh, that will um, put into writing um, exactly what the current situation is and has been for many years. There's no change proposed by this. It doesn't affect the benefits or the compensation level. It just documents that. Um, and since there was uh, that effort going on, I also asked Jan Janet to kind of flag uh, similar administrative policies that might be fairly readily updated and uh, she gave me a, a pretty good number of them here that are included in your packet. Um, the changes are um, meant to either illuminate, clarify, um, in some cases change some dates. Uh, again, the effect of any of these policy changes doesn't necessarily change what's going on. This reflects current practice in, uh, in the most precise way. So there's one on overtime uh, and the change there is reflective of the fact the fire department had changed to 24 hour shifts and it hadn't been reflected in the policy. Um, and so there's language added that is specific to exactly how overtime works in the fire department in the 24 hour um, shift configuration there and now. Um, there's one on holidays and holiday pay. It's pretty extensive, but the only thing that's changed there is a notation that the holidays for the court and probation 
uh, employees are different than the rest of the employees, and that goes back to the fact that the state court administrator's office is really the entity that oversees courts in the state of Michigan, and they have a slightly different list of holidays. Um, and so the uh, notation on that policy was to reflect that there is a difference for those employees that work in court and probation. Uh, again, it's the same, same holidays they have had. It's just documenting those. Uh, there's an update to the vacation policy reflecting the same uh, with regard to uh, court and probation employees because all the other administrative employees get a uh, day in lieu of, kind of a floater holiday in lieu of Veterans Day, but the court actually has Veterans Day off. They just don't work that, so they don't get the floater holiday, and that had been um, neglected in the previous, the previous version of the, of the uh, policy for sick and vacation, or vacation. Um, the health insurance and health savings account policy and the dental policy and the vision and insurance and optical reimbursement policy, all those um, are simply changing to reflect that we now have a different health insurance year. We, for many years, were on a, um, uh, October 1 to September 30, and uh, this year it changed to a January 1 to December 31. So um, the only change to those policies are just changing those dates. Uh, and then there was a correction of a typo in the uh, retirement policy and um, uh, a notation that uh, had not been part of the policy before but is practice. Um, there's, people that are full-time employees begin uh, accruing benefit to their retirement upon their hire, um, but we do have some cases where people don't start as a full-time employee but later become one. And so... Um, we don't go back to their higher date for calculating their retirement benefits. You, you qualify for that as a full-time employee. And so the higher date may be different for a part-time employee than the date that they're eligible for the benefits. So um, just a clarification so there's no um, you know, misunderstanding farther down the road for future employees. Um, everybody that's made that move to this point uh, is uh, under this, this practice already. So... Um, so nothing entirely, you know, significant there, but I think uh, good clarifications and helpful going forward and certainly makes our policies more accurate. Uh, we do, when we introduce uh, policy changes to the council, we uh, typically do that over two council meetings, a chance for you to um, review the proposed changes, ask questions, um, make suggestions, make sure we all understand it, and then we typically come back at the next meeting and, uh, and deal with adopting the final changes to the policy. Uh, and that's probably still what um, should happen probably here is a pretty good number of policies, uh, but it's always council's option if you uh, have a high comfort level with what's in front of you, you've had a chance to look at it enough, and you wish to proceed, you certainly could. Um, there's absolutely no time crunch on staff's per, um, staff side, so whatever council perceives to be in the way you want to proceed is the way we do it. Council, any, any thought about whether to implement tonight or any questions or like to wait a couple weeks or thoughts? I don't see any reason to wait. It looks pretty straightforward. Yeah. Some minor corrections and changes, so I'd be comfortable. I see a lot of I agree. nods. So. Okay. All right, you want us to take them one at a time or can we do them all together? You know, I, I think that uh, we can do it in a single motion, okay. but we'll reflect the n policies by name okay. in that motion, if that's okay with the uh, city attorney. Yep, that's a good way to do it. All right, is there a motion to uh, adopt the policies as uh, explained recently by Ken? So moved. Motion? Support. And support. Comments, questions? Marcy, would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Steenstra? Yes. Truce? Yes. Vanderwall? Yes. Gelderlos? Yes. Maringa? Yes. Norfolk? Yes. And Mayor Moss? Yes. Two quick things. I uh, wanted to draw the council's attention to the ethics policy um, draft number four that was in your packet for tonight. Um, thanks to those of you who, after the last discussion, uh, got back with some additional comments. We tried to reflect those comments in this final draft. It didn't change a great deal from what was there previously, um, but uh, I wanted you to see that in this form because uh, it's going to be published for uh, the public to react to, and 
offer comments uh, now this week. So that was the purpose for including it there. And certainly, um, until you adopt it, it's still subject to whatever modifications council might wish to make. And then uh, wanted to um, also draw your attention to um, the budget work session, our second one for the fiscal year that starts on July 1. That's scheduled for next Monday night at 6 p.m. at the Clean Water Plant. Uh, we'll plan to run through uh, all the non-general fund uh, information that we had not addressed in the first budget work session and also go back to some of those topics we discussed at the first budget work session that may have changed or um, we've updated with new numbers. A um, couple things about that. One is um, we told you in your packet that um, Tammy would be distributing the budget materials after the meeting, which she typically does, um, but she's actually... Um, place them on your table tonight. So don't overlook those. Uh, um, she won't be making a distribution later. They're already in front of you. And um, she very much encourages, uh, after you've had a chance to go through them between now and next Monday, whenever it's convenient, she's very happy to have uh, individual conversation, answer questions, go over anything that's not clear. Uh, hopefully it helps you, and it also helps her to be more um, precise about the presentation at the next meeting. So. Feel free to take advantage of that if you um, if you desire. Uh, and then there's a, a menu before you as well because we're starting at 6 o'clock. We're going to um, do the traditional um, provision of food before the meeting. And if you're interested in doing that, then um, just fill out the menu and leave it on the table. We'll grab it tonight and we'll take care of food for next Monday. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay, great. Uh, there's been a request to... Um, adjourn to a closed session to discuss <coughs> pending litigation. But before we get to, to that, let's take uh, council member comments. JR, let's start with you tonight. Yeah, just two things. You know, what I really liked about this ethics policy is that we're on draft four. And I think that means that we've spent some time to go over this. And uh, not to say that a draft one doesn't achieve the, uh, the agenda for, for what we're looking for, but I think you know, we we spent some time on it. We received some public comment, uh, citizen input, and that's awesome. And I think that's that's well well to be noted. Um, second thing is that the Earth Day recycling event of the Environmental Sustainability Committee. Everyone's got this. I think this has been shared already once. Possibly next week would be a great time to do that as well. Um, this is awesome because we have so many great things we can uh, bring to the Recycling Day event on the 23rd. Electronics, uh, cardboard, foam. You know, all you Amazon habitual um, purchasers bring that. And even textiles, too. I think uh, Goodwill there is going to be helping out there. So um, if you're interested in, in dropping by, we will be there from 10 to 1. That's at the Harbor Foams parking lot, which is over on Prairie, just past Goodwill. Uh, it seems like we may have a slight snafu with, with bringing um, certain items back to uh, where they need to go. Uh, if you have a trailer or a truck and want to show up closer to one, might be helpful. I think we have it covered, but I don't know if you have a big trailer or Timmy, bring your truck or whatever. I, we should have it covered, but if you want, I, I, what should, how do I? How do you say it? Many hands make light work. Is yep, that the, that's it. Yep. Yeah. So if you're looking for something to do at 1 p.m., that might be fun. Thank you. I have nothing to add. Thanks. Okay. No comment tonight. Nothing for me. I agree. Josh. Nothing for me either. <clears throat> Randy. Say something. <laughs> okay, I don't have a lot to say either, other than um, I did uh, get a call from the gentleman, remember a couple of meetings ago, he had had a sewer backup, mm -hmm. and he just would like to see if there's something that the council can do. So I thought um, uh, maybe at, at our next budget work session, since we're going to be talking about the budget, and talking about um, uh, sewer issues, that that might be a good time. But I, just a little bit of a heads up, I said I would bring it to the council. Um, if, if you remember the story, mm -hmm. yeah, he had um, fairly extensive damage. Uh, the claim was denied by the Church city company. because, as I understand it, cities have a certain amount. They're liable only if there's a, like a design defect or maintenance defect and the cause of this was neither one of those right. was determined. Um, however, in the past, the city has done a small amount. It's kind of a 
occasionally for just kind of a good faith kind of a thing. So anyway, we'll be. I, I said I'd bring it up again, but I thought maybe next week would be maybe a more appropriate time then we can discuss it a little more in depth. So, all right. So let's see. Let's see. So, is there a motion to adjourn to a closed session for uh, purposes of discussing pending litigation regarding commercial tax appeals for JCPenney and Coles? Because an open meeting would have a detrimental financial effect on the litigation, the litigating or settlement position of the city. So, is such a motion? So, motion. support. And support. Any questions, comments? Marcy, would you call the roll on that, please? Councilmember Truce? Yes. Vanderwall? Yes. Gelderlos? Yes. Maringa? Yes. Nordhook? Yes. Steenstrom? Yes. And Mayor Moss? Yes. Well, to our guests, thank you for coming tonight. But we'd uh, ask you to leave the room so we can have a closed session.